Hello students! In this lesson, we will discuss the second quarter topic for arts which is the different kinds of technology-based art. Let's now start with our discussion. Technology has literally taken over every aspect of life in the 21st century, and the creative and visual arts have not been spared. In fact, for the younger generations, art as you know it is defined by technology from its creation to its manipulation to its reproduction and even to its distribution. Technology-based art is essentially computer-generated and or manipulated. Through the centuries, visual artists used actual brushes and palettes and a whole array of paints, inks, and natural pigments applied to paper, canvas, fabric, stucco walls, and ceilings. Today's computer artists employ the ever-expanding powers of image manipulation programs and applications to create their works which can appear in an entire range of media, whether as a physical output or a visual experience. Let's start with computer or digital arts. This makes use of electronic and mechanical devices rather than the artist's own hand to produce the desired images and effects. Thus, these are definitely technology-based art forms. Computer art or digital art first came on the scene in the early 1960s. Understandably, this was due to the technology that was constantly developing and that became available at that time. Thus, the early experimenters were not necessarily artists but engineers and scientists who had access to and experience with the hardware needed. It was they who began to recognize the potential of artistic expression through the application of scientific and mathematical principles. In fact, even in the sample works we present here, you will note a strong scientific or mathematical look and feel to the creations of many digital artists. Geometric forms and repeating patterns appear frequently. More traditional subjects like human beings, landscapes, animals, and still life elements are simply incorporated as part of those forms and patterns, rather than as the main focus. Also understandable was the initial reaction of the public to computer-generated art. There were questions as to whether it was, in fact, true art since it made use of electronic and mechanical devices rather than the artist's own hand to produce the images and effects. Within a few years, however, there was a general acceptance of digital art as an exciting and thought-provoking form of modern art. Exhibits of computer art became highly popular and critically acclaimed as digital artists or computer art masters or superstars came to the fore in Europe, Russia, and the likes. In recent decades, personal gadgets such as laptops, tablets, and Android phones have incorporated the artistic capabilities of the large-scale computers so it is now possible for anyone to be a digital artist. Here are some examples of the works of artists which are computer or digital arts. Some digital artists have even used their works to express their views on political, social, and cultural issues, as well as to advocate causes that are critical to modern life such as the environment and climate change. Others even explore the philosophical relationship between science and technology and the arts. In our country, Filipino artists were likewise influenced by the technology trend in art. However, this was more in the commercial sphere. From the 1960s to the 1990s, their computer-generated works were primarily geared towards illustrating for international comic books. In fact, Filipino illustrators earned quite a reputation for their talents and were highly in demand in this field. 
they eventually became equally sought after as animators for some of the major film production companies in the United States as well as animated television series produced in different countries. Eventually, however, the concept of computer-generated works as a means of serious artistic expression gained ground among the younger generation of local artists. Today, even the more established names in the field, artists and critics alike, have come to accept and recognize digital works as fine art. To view works by Philippine artists employing digital art techniques, you may visit the following websites of the more progressive museums and organizations. Among these websites are the Center for Art and Thought, Deviant Art, the Ateneo Art Gallery, and the Yuchenko Museum. Here is an example of a digital art made by a local artist named Antonio Gorordo. This is a digital art entitled Cityscape. There are also institutions offering training courses on the digital arts, such as the First Academy of Computer Arts, the Philippine Center for Creative Imaging or PCCI, as well as the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority or TESDA, through scholarships given by the Animation Council of the Philippines or ACPI. Courses such as these open up an array of career opportunities for young Filipinos in the fields of advertising, animation design, multimedia communication, and web development. Computer technology has by now invaded every aspect of modern life. It was therefore inevitable that it would develop into forms and devices that could be mass-produced, mass-distributed, and therefore widely accessible to everyone. In other words, anyone with a computer device, from a desktop PC to a laptop to a tablet or Android phone, can now capture and edit images and videos, create, manipulate, and share works of art, and even compose music. You can be, and probably already are, a digital artist in your own right. Under computer or digital art, we are also going to explore the following types. Mobile phone art, digital photography, digital painting, computer-generated images or CGI, and even videos such as TV and film. Let's start with mobile phone art. The mobile phone that you constantly hold has evolved from a mere communication tool into a creative device that allows you to generate original works of art for an entire range of purposes. This could be personal photographs and videos that you can manipulate with a myriad special effects, both visual as well as sound and music. They could also be school projects or reports that require you to combine images, incorporate text, even include simple animation. And the wonder of it all is that you can do all this right on your own mobile devices, particularly the new generation models known as Android tablets, phones, and combination of both called tablets. The tasks that traditional photo editors use to perform manually, like cropping, retouching, airbrushing, are now just few of the many editing effects done for you with split-second ease at the click of a mouse, a keyboard command, or a few taps and drags of your finger on a touch screen. You are probably already familiar with the following image manipulation applications and programs that run on today's Android devices. The first one is called Pixlr, a powerful free online image editor. We also have Big Collage, which allows you to make collages incorporating photos, stickers, text, and frames. We also have PhotoGrid, a downloadable application for Android phones that allows you to make collages out of images from your photo gallery. Next is Google Boot, an iPad application with also a free downloadable version that enables you to doodle on your images using available stickers. Next one is Photo Booth, an application for taking photos and videos using an iPad or iPad Mini. 
A version for the iPhone called Simple Boot is also available. Another one is Magic Mirror Boot an iPhone application that allows you to take amusing, distorted images, simulating camera effects. Another one is PicMonkey, a free online photo editing tool that provides filters, frames, text, and effects to manipulate your images. Another one is Flipagram, a downloadable application that allows you to bring your photos to life in short videos set to music of your choice. Next one is PixArt, a free photo editor and drawing application as well as a social network for you to share your art with others. Next one is called Snapseed, a photo application that enables you to enhance, transform, and share your photos. A free downloadable version for Android phone is also available. Next one is Instagram, a fast and fun way to share images with others snap a photo, choose from among the available filters, and share via Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and more. Many more such programs and applications are constantly being developed with even more new exciting and fun features and capabilities. Each of these has an extensive array of special features you can use to modify your images. Among these are frames, borders, and banners, filters, Cropping in different shapes, automatic collage or color change, stickers, text bubbles, effects such as warp, skew, tunnel, fish eye, and negative, adding spot color to only certain elements of an image, creating a photo montage with music. Some programs even make it possible to have any photo simulate a work of art in a whole range of media, from oil to watercolor to pen and ink to charcoal, to oil pastel, to a Warhol poster, to a Japanese woodblock print. Here are some examples of mobile phone art. Let us now go to computer-generated images or CGI. If you want to create original images from scratch, you may make your own illustrations using specialized programs for image generation and manipulation. Examples of these would be Adobe Illustrator and Corel Draw. These are, however, designed to run on a desktop computer and laptops, so you would need to have access to these larger and more complex devices. Using these tools, you can create CGI's or computer-generated image. It can be defined as any image that is created with the use of a computer-based processor or program. Because computers nowadays are also widely used, these images are therefore remarkably pervasive. There are scaled-down versions of such programs specifically developed for use on smaller, handheld units like your personal tablet or Android phone. These enable you to perform virtually all of the tasks that a program like Illustrator performs but almost literally in the palm of your hand. Many of these come at a fraction of the cost of the more complex programs or in some cases even for free. Among such programs are GIMP or GNU Image Manipulation Program, Paint.net, Inkscape, Zara Extreme, Artweaver, Draw Plus, Pencil, Picasa, PaintStar, Smooth Draw, Spray, Carbon, Adobe Photoshop Express, and Corel PaintShop Pro X5. Computer-generated images are difficult to identify because many images are processed using a computer. Being so, it is generally understood that mere incorporation, alteration, and enhancement of images and basic properties such as brightness, contrast, and colors are not necessarily computer-generated. Let's now explore the world of digital photography. Another means of generating an original image is to capture it first as a digital file. In the case of today's electronic technology, that would mean recording the image using a digital camera or a device with a built-in camera like your mobile phone 
Android device or tablet. Prior to the development of digital photography, cameras were essentially sealed boxes that would allow a split-second entry of light to strike a section of light-sensitive film inside it. The result was that whatever was in front of the camera at the precise instant that the light entered it would be imprinted on that exposed section of film as a photographic image. The photographer, or a commercial developing service, would then have to process the exposed film in a special enclosed space known as a dark room, and only then would that recorded image be seen. Let's now know the difference between a point-and-shoot camera versus a DSLR camera. The multi-step process described above has since been overtaken by the magic of digital photography. Today's users have the option of a point-and-shoot type of digital camera which automatically makes all the adjustments in lighting, focus, zoom in and zoom out, even removal of red eye with the user being given some leeway for slight adjustments. It offers image enhancement features like adjusting color and brightness and balances as well as sharpening or blurring the image. It may even offer unique effects like fish eye or filters that allow pre-setting of the photo to be taken with a color tint or a special texture. Plus, it allows the user to immediately review the photos taken without waiting for a complex developing process and to delete any unsatisfactory images while storing the good ones for future needs. A second option is the Digital Single Lens Reflex or DSLR camera. This also provides the filmless and instant review feature of a point-and-shoot type of digital camera but gives the photographer much more artistic freedom and control to select the camera settings to create the desired final image with the preferred visual effects. In this picture shows the difference between a point-and-shoot and a DSLR camera. Many professional photographers remain loyal to the traditional, like non-digital, single-lens reflex camera which still uses film. They believe that film photography has an authenticity and genuineness to its images that is lost in the artificial and automatic manipulations of digital photography. There is no denying, however, the ease and convenience that digital photography offers to the millions of amateur photographers out there. Without needing years of training and experience, we are now able to capture images with professional quality results. Here are some basic tips for taking good photographs. Whether you are using a point-and-shoot camera or a DSLR, there are basic guidelines for capturing a good quality photographic image. First, choose a good location. An interesting location can sometimes make the difference between a good and a great photo. Second, check that the available background is relatively simple and not too cluttered so that the focus will be on your chosen subject. Third, natural light in the outdoors or near a window is usually the most flattering or effective for any kind of subject. Ideally, the best light for photos is within the first hour after sunrise and the last hour before sunset. Fourth, avoid taking shots facing the light as this would make your subject backlit and most of the details would be lost in shadow. Fifth, if you intend to take a post shot, position your subject where you want in relation to the location, background, and source of light. Sixth, if you intend to take a candid shot, position yourself where you can capture the most interesting, amusing, touching, or engaging moment or expression. Seven, take a variety of shots, ranging from far shots showing the surroundings to medium-distance shots concentrating on the main subject to tight or close-up shots that focus on details of the subject. You can then choose from among all these for the best photo of photos. Let's now go to video games. For today's younger generation that grew up in a digital world, even entertainment now comes courtesy of computer devices. A major component of such entertainment is in the form of video games of every conceivable genre, 
subject matter, and skill level. These range from educational games and mind twisters to building and construction games to ones that entail physical interaction by the users like sports, fitness, and dance. Then there are the tremendously popular games of strategy, war, science fiction, and mythical worlds that employ amazingly complex and realistic graphics, motion, sound, and other special effects. Similar to image creation and manipulation, it is now possible for video game fans to become video game creators themselves. Online tutorials and guides are available on sites like eHow, Instructables, and YouTube. Plus, there are available programs that can be downloaded and used immediately with no need for prior knowledge on coding or web development. Examples of such programs are Twine, Stencil, and Game Maker. Let's now go to Digital Painting. Digital painting is a method of creating an artwork using a computer. This is, however, different from the image generating devices and programs discussed above, which create, modify, store, and share images entirely on a laptop, tablet, or Android phone. Digital painting still makes use of traditional painting mediums such as acrylic paint, oils, ink, and watercolor, and also applies the pigment to traditional services such as canvas, paper, polyester, etc. But it does so by employing computer software that drives a type of robot device such as a plotter or an office machine such as a printer that takes the place of the artist's hand. Digital painting also refers to a technique using a graphic software program to create an artwork that is totally virtual. The canvas, brushes, paints, and other tools are all virtual, existing only within the computer. And the finished work is also stored in virtual format to be shared through cyberspace. Control Paint is an example of an online resource for teaching yourself digital painting for free via simple videos and mini tutorials. Let's go to video technology or imaging videos. For social media purpose, another tremendously powerful and innovative field that digital technology has revolutionized is that of creating and presenting videos. The explosion of social media in recent decades has provided a new platform for video materials targeting the netizens of today. Not only are there online advertisements that continuously bombard the user's computer screens and mobile phone screens, but there are also millions of personally produced videos that are constantly uploaded to online platforms like YouTube from music, dance, and stage performances through tutorials of all kinds to recipes to documentaries to news clips to marriage proposals. Again, the digital technology to capture and edit such videos is contained right in your tablets and Android phones. And just as with the still images discussed above, the raw video clips can be enhanced and modified with a myriad of effects depending on the particular video application you have installed on your devices. Second is for medical or scientific purposes. Another extremely valuable use of today's video technology is that of imaging videos in the fields of medicine and science. You may be familiar with magnetic resonance imaging or MRI, computerized tomography or CT scans, and the like which are used to create and record visual images of a patient's internal anatomy in order to diagnose and treat diseases and injuries. There are also ultrasound tests or sonograms which translates sound waves bouncing off physical objects into images that can be studied whether a baby developing in the womb in 2D, 3D, or 4D options, growths or malformations inside the body, and structural flaws in buildings as well as objects in outer space, underground, and deep in the ocean. For our generalization, today, many traditional disciplines are often combined with digital technologies thus blurring the lines between traditional works of art and new media works. As it is ever-evolving and changing, the digital world and technology-based art tools keep producing new ways of creating, editing, 
and forming the artistic vision of an individual who must keep in touch with the latest updates in order to use the maximum potentials of machines. And that would be all for our topic for arts this second quarter. I hope you learned a lot about technology-based art. See you again in our next lesson. Goodbye!